What's going on everybody? I'm Jason Schroeder, Vital MTB, and today we're checking out Kinematics Coyote FST Titanium Trail Bike. Kinematic is a young brand out of Southern California that produces innovative, high-end titanium bicycles. With a focus on creating reliable and durable bikes that will stand the test of time, the Coyote FST is their first full suspension model. A very unique bike with a ton of features to unpack, it uses a single pivot suspension layout with 130 millimeters of rear wheel travel paired with a 150 millimeter fork. It's designed around a pinion gearbox system and can be set up with either 27.5 or 29 inch wheels. All right, so without wasting any more time, let's dive into all the details of the Coyote before we hit the trails for some first ride impressions. All right, so I'm joined by Phil Thomas, founder of Kinematic Bike. Phil, thanks so much for coming out today and uh, joining us and letting us ride this thing. Yeah, definitely, thanks for being here. There's a lot to get into with this bike. Mm -hmm. And before we do that, I'm just kind of curious on what's your background with starting this brand? You know, you just started it back in 2018 and you know, what were you doing before that? What kind of motivated you to start making titanium bicycles? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, I was designing lights for the off-road industry and I was inspired by how the whole product development process and was also really inspired by bikes in general. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the reason why I studied mechanical engineering mm -hmm. and you know, I just love designing good products and that's kind of the goal here. What I wanted to do was make a bike basically that I wanted that didn't really exist yet. Mm -hmm. And the inspiration there was basically I had bought brand new hardtail bike, you know, it was my first time buying a new bike. Mm -hmm. And my first ride, I took it out, I hit a bush right on the derailleur, you know. <laughs> and then, so it was like I had just spent a bunch of money on this bike and I hit it like a bush really lightly on the derailleur and it, it was toast <laughs> you know what i mean uh-huh so it, i just thought there had to be a better way and then i kind of discovered pinion um they were really new at the time so i wanted to design a bike around it you know i had been designing products for five years at that point and i came up with the coyote hardtail built that one up tested it for a year or two um, i kind of graduated one in a full suspension wanted to design one but this is what i came up with right of course all your bikes are made out of titanium what drew you to that material as opposed to steel aluminum or carbon fiber yeah so i really like titanium it's got a lot of cool material properties going for it like it's as strong as steel it's as light as aluminum so, I mean, really, I think it's the best material to build a bike out of if you're gonna build a metal bike. Mm -hmm. um, the one drawback is cost. It's got a lot of flexibility as far as like what you can build with it, mm -hmm. you know, as far as making prototypes with it and like rapidly iterating different versions of the same bike. Definitely the most exciting part of this bike to me personally is the fact that it uses a gearbox system. Mm -hmm. um, for people that maybe aren't super familiar with the gearbox, yeah. can you maybe just touch on like how the system functions and how it compares to, you know, our more traditional derailleur drivetrain? Yeah, so the gearbox is just a super durable way to do a bicycle drivetrain. I haven't had to do anything. It's been super indestructible. I don't know if I should say this, but I actually changed the oil for the first time like two days ago, okay. you know? <laughs> um, well, that was something I read on side is yeah. that you like, literally change the oil in this because it's like yeah. an open bath design right. which i think maybe people should think of it more as like their car transmission than their typical bicycle drive yeah. yeah yeah and you kind of can I, it's a, if anything it's kind of like a motorcycle transmission okay. too because it's just so beastly mm -hmm. you know what i mean like you can just crank on it so hard and like you don't have to worry about it at all i read on the site a uh -huh. bold statement that you guys think gearboxes will eventually replace the rear derailleur which yeah I love because it just shows such dedication to using a gearbox. Yeah. And we kind of have touched on a little bit of like the reasons why you guys think that, but like sell everybody on gearboxes. Yeah. So I think it's kind of an easy sell. I mean, they're a little more expensive, but if you think about it, it's going to last a lot longer. So mm -hmm. it comes out to be like significantly less expensive. I think the main thing is number one is you don't have to have like a cassette on your rear wheel. All the weight is centered between your feet, which is also really good. It lowers the unsprung weight. It kind of gets rid of the need for all these like complicated suspension systems. Mm -hmm. Another good perk is the belt drive aspect. That's your thing. I mean, it's kind of a, I wouldn't say polarizing topic, but mm -hmm. like belt drives, they're cool, they're quiet, they're durable. 
Is and, there any downside to a belt drive? Uh, so the downside of a belt drive is if you're riding like in mud, but even that, I mean, they're, they're so good nowadays. Like really the, the only downside is like repairability. Mm -hmm. It's just more difficult to repair. Like you either have to have an extra belt drive ready to go mm -hmm. Or you, that's pretty much your only option. Yeah, yeah, entirely <laughs> like, replace it, yeah. Let's talk about the bike. That's what right. we're here to ride. Um, yeah. With a name like Kinematic, I feel like we got to touch on the suspension design. Of course. So you went with a semi-simplistic, you know, single pivot layout, mm -hmm. has 130 millimeters of travel. What kind of drew you to that suspension layout and then you know, what were your goals when kind of defining how the suspension would perform? Um, so yeah, I was really focused on like anti-squat, anti-rise numbers. I tried a variety of different suspension designs. You know, I did a couple VP links. I did a couple DW links. You know, I was running through everything and I thought to myself, like the whole goal of a pinion drive system is to kind of create like this really simple, indestructible bike. Mm -hmm. So. I realized that if I'm looking at this from my typical mechanical design perspective, the more linkages, you know, the more pivots, all of that serves to overcomplicate the bike mm -hmm. and also overcomplicate the maintenance. After probably the fifth iteration of like my DW link or my VP link design that I was trying for, I just thought, you know, why not just go with a single pivot? like? It's, it's the simplest style of suspension you can do. And I looked at the KTM EXC frame, mm -hmm. so dirt bike frames, Okay. and they're 100% single pivot. Like there's nothing to it. Mm -hmm. It's just a swing arm and a shock. So that was another inspiration of just boiling down kind of the, the suspension design as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Coming up with the most simplified design possible while still hitting all my anti-squat, anti-rise numbers to make sure that there's no uh, pedal bob while climbing hills. You also mentioned that this does have the option to run a longer stroke shock and get more travel right. on the bike as well. Yeah, so the goal too was to kind of make it a bit of a chameleon. You can put a 55 millimeter shock and it bumps it up to 142 millimeters of rear travel. Sweet. Let's touch on geometry. Would you call this a large that we have here to ride today? I know it's a prototype, but. Yeah, so this one's probably gonna be like between large and extra large was what I was going for. Do you wanna touch on just kind of like head tube angle, yeah, seat let's, tube angle, let's do your talk... general ge geometry specs? For sure. So geometry wise, I wanted to do something a little different. So I came up with like this really steep seat tube angle. Mm -hmm. The trend lately has been for head tube angles to get more slack and more slack. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something a little different. So I made it a 66 degree head tube angle when it's got the 29er wheels on there. The seat tube angle is 81 degrees, which is super steep for a bike, right? Mm -hmm. So it feels really weird the first time you get on it, mm -hmm. you know? But once you get on the climbs, it's just got this really natural, neutral, planted feeling because the C-tube angle is so steep. Mm -hmm. So in this configuration, it's definitely designed as like a hard climber. Okay. You know, it's something that you can spend all day on. Like it's a really comfortable bike because, because of all those features. And then the titanium frame gives it a little extra flex. So with that said, when you switch it over to the mullet build, it will give it like a kind of a more normal C-tube angle. Mm -hmm. So it'll be right around 79 degrees, which is kind of more of the like enduro style. It's still a little bit steep for the norm, mm -hmm. but um, it also slacks out the head tube to around 64, 65 degrees yeah. and kind of just changes up the geometry of the bike a lot. Like yeah. you can get an enduro bike and a trail bike and all you have to do is change the tires around, you know? Yeah, so. yeah. What's your plan as far as how many sizes you think you'll offer? And then are you gonna give people the option to do custom frames? Um, so I'm gonna do three to four sizes. I probably won't do custom frames. Okay. It's just, it's a lot of effort to yeah. build like a custom bike. And then one of the main issues is that you don't get the same tooling. So with a custom frame, you have to use like a universal tool is what it's called. Okay. And the level of consistency is much lower than if you use like a non-universal tool. This bike says prototype on the top tube, so. Yeah, this is a I, prototype. Right, I know, uh, <laughs> I know, I know on your website it says coming soon. Yeah. 
what we're looking at looks pretty close to production. Yeah. How far out are you from having bikes? And then do you plan to do frame only builds and kind of what's the cost of, of those different options? Yeah, so um, right now we're about a year away from full-fledged production. There's some things that I'm not totally happy with on this one. It's, it's perfectly safe structurally. It's just not quite there yet quality-wise for me. Yeah, I'm pushing it out a year so that I can dial in the quality make sure that I'm delivering the best possible product. So what I'm planning on doing with builds is we're gonna have a couple different builds. Like one of them is gonna be frame only, right? If you have a pinion drive train already and you wanna build one up or you wanna do a transfer, okay, cool. we'll sell the bike just by itself. So the other build option is gonna be frame and drive train. Basically we're gonna do like a frame, uh, frame drive train, fork, seat post, maybe some handlebars and some stems. Okay. I, right now I'm developing these ones, this handlebar and this stem. Mm -hmm. I'm testing a bunch of different options to see what I like and testing out some different designs. Do you have any idea kind of what the price might be for just frame only and then frame plus drivetrain? Yeah, so frame only is gonna be like $4.99, frame plus drivetrain will be like around $54.99 to $59.99. Um, I've got some preliminary prices up on the website now for people to play around with and kind of build and check it out and cool. spec it. Phil, thank you so much for all the information. I think it's uh, time to just go hit the trails and see how this thing rides. Cool, sounds good. <laughs> wrapped up getting done with doing a few laps on the Coyote FST and that was a super cool experience. First time for me riding a full suspension titanium mountain bike, first time riding any sort of gearbox system. You know standing back and, and looking at the bike from further away maybe starting with the geometry it definitely looks really unique. The seat post is incredibly steep and I think that makes the head tube angle look quite slack, but you know, on trail and pedaling especially, you are seated pretty upright and quite forward, but it wasn't something that was crazy different feeling for my normal mountain bike. Um, this reach is quite a bit longer, and I think it's, we're over 500 millimeters, which is quite a bit longer than I usually ride at six foot tall. And again, it never felt super huge pedaling. Um, you know, seated upright, seated forward over the handlebars, super efficient one of those bikes that like you can throw in a few pedal strikes and it immediately gets translated to forward momentum um, not a lot of pedal bob super fun bike to climb the head angle even though it might look kind of slack it definitely is in that 66 degree range kind of talking about descending performance we rode a mixture of kind of bermy built up flowy trails and then a few you know more technical raw trails and on the flowy stuff the bike felt super good really balanced really easy to carry speed very responsive and had a nice planted feel i think the length of the bike plus having some low hung weight from the gearbox just made it so easy to kind of settle into leaning corners um, yeah an easy bike to just kind of take down your everyday trail we got into more technical terrain i did notice the head angle being a little steeper compared to bikes i ride nowadays i mean it's crazy to think that 66 degrees is a little bit steeper but it's kind of the day and age we live in and uh i think we're also quite used to as bikes have gotten longer they've gotten slacker where this is a bike that's gotten longer but it's actually stayed a little bit on the steeper side so it might be something that's a little bit limiting in steep or trails that have deeper holes where your bike is just kind of, you know, seesawing forward and back. I think that anybody who's again, is gonna be interested in this bike is going to be well aware of the geometry package that it has and knows that it's gonna cater the type of trails they're wanting to ride. You have to get a shot of this massive snake crossing the trail. <laughs> Whoa. Is that not a rattlesnake? No. Back from snake intermission. Kind of touching on the, the titanium frame, it really 
kind of like looser chattery sections is where I noticed the biggest difference. And it just seemed to, it had a very smooth feel on trail. It dampened those kind of high speed vibrations, I guess. Um, other than that, I wouldn't say I noticed a huge difference. This bike, if you grab the front triangle and the rear triangle right now, has a little bit of flex and give to it. And from talking with Phil, I know that's something that he plans to keep refining as he works towards a production frame. The plan is to make it a little bit more robust uh, rear triangle, kind of work on the stiffness of it. But where aluminum frames that I've ridden that have a little bit of flex and give that feels great in rough sections, but they tend to load up in corners and they can be a little bit unpredictable. This to me never loaded up and it never felt like, you know, as I'm apexing a turn, my rear wheel's still entering while my front wheel's exiting. It had a very nice, consistent feel, despite maybe there being a little bit extra flex than what production frames a year from now will have. Going into the pinion gearbox system, I was super excited to ride this because somehow in my cycling career, I've never had the chance to ride a gearbox system. And, you know, I think in my mind, I go back to like when Honda was making downhill bikes and that was like the allure of those bikes was wanting to know what was going on inside of there. And kind of like in the best way and the most underwhelming way possible, uh, I didn't notice a huge difference pedaling, you know, with, with the gearbox. Probably the, the biggest learning curve is the fact that you have to let off a little bit when you do make shifts. It's more extreme. Felt like it was, I had to let off more when I was in harder pedaling gears. As I got down to kind of like, your first and second gear, I didn't have to let off as much, which was nice in technical climbing situations. You can kind of just smash gears like you would with a normal derailleur and cassette. Other than that, the feeling of it is super smooth. You have, it creates a different noise having the belt drive, but as far as a performance difference or a huge difference from your normal chain and cassette that we're used to, felt pretty similar. Probably my favorite part is the fact that you have a little bit, kind of the same as e-bikes, you have like that low weight and it's centered in the bike. That matched with the fact that it's super quiet. You know, you, you don't have your derailleur dancing around, rattling on rough trails. You also don't have the fear of your derailleur or your any of your drivetrain components being exposed or the potential of clipping them on rocks. I mean, even just we were about to shoot these bike shots. You know, I was like, oh, I can lean the bike over on the derailleur side. Like things you're so used to thinking about as you ride and being conscious of your derailleur is not an issue anymore. Other than that, I would say the, you know, it's tough to speak on the actual durability of the system since we've just been riding it for one day. But I mean, as Phil mentioned, I think he said he had like five years on, on this system and he just had changed the oil. So, which sounds awesome. You get to change the oil on your mountain bike now. But I think that does speak a lot to, you know, you're having a titanium frame with a drivetrain system and they're all, the whole idea is to end up on a bike that you might be spending a little bit money, more money up front, but it's gonna last you hopefully longer than your typical aluminum or carbon mountain bike. So what's the bottom line on Kinematics Coyote FST trail bike? Well, of course, like the last one of these we did, I've only had one day on the bike. So take my impressions as just touching the surface of what this bike could provide. but. Like I said before, I think that this, this is a bike that it's not going to be the first mountain bike I see people getting. It's for people who, you know, probably been riding mountain bikes for a long time. They know what they're looking for in how a bike will perform on trail. And they're interested in, you know, the geometry package this bike has getting a 130 travel bike. That's going to be super fun for everyday use it might not be the most capable, but it, it slots nicely in that kind of ride everything trail bike mentality. But it also has a bunch of really unique features that, you know, somebody like myself who's ridden mountain bikes my whole life, it is really refreshing to ride, you know, a uh, frame material that's not as common, a drivetrain system that is much different than, you know, anything I've ever ridden. I think all of those factors combined is what makes the Coyote really appealing. Of course, the cost of the frame or the cost of the frame and the, the pinion gearbox is gonna be pretty steep, but I, if I were getting this bike for myself, my plan would be to keep it for the rest of my life. You know, it's not gonna be 
a bike that I keep for a season and then I'm immediately looking at trying to get my return on investment so that I can get the next greatest bike. This is a bike that I'm getting for what it provides right now and I'm going to be looking forward to having that same ride experience five years from now. All right, well, there you have it. Kinematic Bikes Coyote FST Titanium Trail Bike. Thank you so much to Phil for coming out today and giving us the opportunity to ride his creation. If you're interested in learning any more about the Coyote or any of their other models, you can head to kinematic.bike. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And for more mountain bike news, you can head to vitalmtb.com. Thanks.